Hello and welcome back to another slideshow from qualityinspection.org. This is part two of Quality Control Basics and today we're looking at the AQL which is Acceptance Quality Limit. These three slideshows are going through fundamental QC concepts that you really need to get a handle of if you started doing professional quality control. We've already covered the inspection levels and today we're looking at the AQL. So before we dive into trying to work out the AQL, we need to understand that there's no such thing as zero defects. So if we accept that there might be defects in every lot that's produced by our suppliers, we need to start to define what proportion of defects can be tolerated for our markets. A good example is the aviation industry. Any defective parts are very serious indeed because they could cause a disaster. So the tolerance in aviation is of course very, very low. But it's a bit different for importers from China, India, other areas in Southeast Asia, because if you're sourcing consumer products from there, you're going to have to accept that there's going to be a higher percentage of defects than in aviation. So if we talk about why the AQL is needed, well, it's an objective limit of defects that are or are not acceptable. So instead of guessing, we've got to draw a line in the sand as to how many defects are too many. This is something that you as the buyer need to decide. And there are two reasons why you shouldn't leave it up to a quality inspector alone. So firstly, any instructions given to an inspector shouldn't include any gray areas because this opens the door to corruption. For example, some suppliers might try to bribe quality inspectors to look the other way when certain defects are found that you haven't specified already. Secondly, your supplier needs to be accountable. And one of the ways to do this is to make sure that they have very clear criteria on what is acceptable or not in terms of defects, so the AQL. Otherwise, they may argue that any rejected products are unfairly rejected. Simply put, the AQL is the proportion of defects allowed by you. And you need to communicate this to the supplier in advance so they know where they stand and they also know what's expected of them in terms of quality. There are three categories of defects that you need to understand. Some are worse than others and they're categorized in descending order of seriousness. So firstly, we've got critical defects which are so bad that they might cause a user harm or might certainly cause your entire shipment of products to be blocked by customs. Major defects aren't as bad as that, but they would probably lead to most consumers not buying products or returning them quickly. And minor defects represent a very slight departure perhaps from your specifications, but would probably be accepted by most consumers. A few more points to know about defects. Professional inspectors will notice defects and evaluate categories by themselves if left to their own devices. But actually, as the buyer, you should be ring fencing what defects are and are not to you and showing your inspectors what these defects are and assigning the categories for each one that they're going to then follow. Defects aren't only on the products, they can be on labeling or on packaging as well. If a sample has several defects in one, which hopefully it won't, only the most severe is counted. Number of defects isn't the only cause for acceptance or refusal of a lot. The products can be refused because they don't conform to a buyer's specifications, even though the workmanship is really good. You need to be careful not to mix two different products. Those are products which are made with different processes or in different factories in one inspection they need their own separate inspections because if they're inspected together imagine that one product has been made at really great quality and there are very few or or no defects in the sample that's being inspected but the other ones which are mixed into the same sample have a low quality actually this sample might still pass because the better workmanship of the other products might compensate for the ones of poor quality so you end up getting products which are too poor quality still going through. Now we move on to the AQL tables and I'm gonna show you a really great way to work out what your AQL is. And it's very, very simple once you've got the tables and you know what your lot size is. These tables are related to the random sampling product inspection standards and are commonly called AQL tables. 
important to know that for most consumer products, critical defects will not be allowed in the sample and the AQL for major defects is 2.5% and for minor defects is 4%. So what are the AQL tables? Let's have a quick look. There are two tables. Table one has the sample size code letters and that helps you to define the sample size that you're going to be inspecting. And then table two works off of the letter that you get from table one and it shows you the sampling and acceptance limits or AQL that you're dealing with. So looking at them one by one, I'll just use a quick example as well. So you're buying 8,000 widgets from a factory and choosing inspection level two, which is the most common. And this returns the letter L. Here's our lot size. So that's 8,000 fits into here. And then letter L is here. Now we move on to table two and you can look for letter L. And you see that this shows that you're drawing 200 pieces at random as your sample. And if we go in even closer to work out our AQL, if we're following the usual practice of tolerating 0% critical defects, 2.5% major and 4% minor, then we can see that the maximum acceptable number of defects is 10 major and 14 minor out of the 200 pieces. That means that the inspection is failed if one critical defect is found and or at least 11 major or 15 minor defects are found too. So let's wrap it up quickly. AQL stands for acceptance quality limit and this is the limit of defects that you can and cannot accept in a lot of your products. You can find the limit easily by using the AQL tables which we just had a look at or you can also use AQL calculators and we provide a link to ours here. And all you need to know is your batch size to get started. There are three categories of defects, critical, major, and minor. Critical will lead to a batch being rejected outright. Typically, the AQL for major defects is 2.5% and minor defects is 4%. And we come to an end. So that's a quick look at the AQL. And now you know how to define the number of defects that you are happy to accept or cannot accept per lot, which will help your supplier to produce products at the quality that you need. If you're in need of help with quality inspections right now, pause this page and you can have a look at the quality assurance solutions that Sophie's provides. And we also provide a lot of blog posts and free resources. So we've got the quality inspection blog and then the blog and resource library over at Sophie's and at Sync Control also have the blog too. Thanks for tuning in this time. And watch out for part three of this series, where we look at when to conduct your product inspections. Catch you next time.